Good morning guys, I hope you're all doing great. In this episode I'm continuing working on the 1962 BSA Super Rocket and specifically looking at this fuel tank and also the carburetor that needs a good clean out. <laughs> Great, so that's all this frame section cleaned from here to here. And I've also cleaned the cylinder head and made a couple of observations, nothing scary at all. Uh, there's a stud and a nut missing here, same as this on the rocker cover. And then there is a breather pipe. I'm going to replace that with something a bit nicer. I'll also put a clamp around this, but it's generally in overall excellent condition. I'm very happy with it. No broken fins, everything looks great. And so the next job will be to remove the carburetor and clean it. Here's the tank on the bench. It's in overall excellent condition. I haven't looked inside yet, so I may have jinxed myself, but the chrome looks really good. Very happy with that. I haven't even cleaned it yet. I'm gonna be very, very careful how I clean this to make sure that I don't take these flames off the chrome. And then the paint's got a few little chips, but nothing too serious. I'm hoping that the paintwork will come up as well as it did on the oil tank and the toolbox. And then I'm gonna take the petrol taps, the petcocks off the tank and clean them thoroughly. And just looking at the other side, well, there's the top, it's the Miracle Design paintwork. And then, again, very nice. There's a few little rust spots there, actually. I'll clean them up. Okay, let's see what it looks like inside. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah, I would say overall a little light rust. Certainly nothing too serious at all. That should come out with the right solution. Just gonna get rid of the remaining fuel out of here. There's some sloshing around. Here's the underside of the tank and it looks to be in great condition. Uh, obviously repainted because look there, there's that beautiful flamboyant red that these tanks and side panels were originally painted in. And you can see this is the rest of that rubber coating that was stuck to the crossbar. So no doubt that is what was holding on to the tank and that was why it was so difficult to get off. And then again, you just see little glimpses of the flamboyant red under here as well. Just a beautiful color for this bike. But we're leaving the orange and we're leaving the flames for now. <laughs> so the next job will be to remove these fuel taps and replace the washers and just clean them out thoroughly. Wow, that's tight.
Hopefully there's some filters in here. Yeah, great. God, they look great, don't they? They look lovely and clean. Oh yeah, they should come up great. Oh, that one's a lot dirtier. Okay, good. I'm going to stick these in the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, these washers are stuck on here, so they will separate hopefully in the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm being very careful as I take these washers over this strain gauze here, you don't damage it. Yeah, I thought these plungers actually screwed together, but they don't, they just pull apart. And here are the fuel taps after 10 minutes only in this ultrasonic cleaner. And I uh, put them in a little plastic bag this time. 80% water, 20% heavy duty cleaner. This simple green purple coloured solution. And they look fantastic, don't they? The uh, washers did separate as expected. Oh yeah, that explains it. Here's the carburetor on the bench and it, it looks fine, it's pretty dirty. Uh, the ultrasonic cleaner will take care of all of that. I've just noticed a little damage there on the flange and I'm not sure if this has got an o-ring underneath this gasket but we'll soon see. So I'll disassemble everything here. What I've also done is I've made a note of I'm going to register it, essentially understand what all the basic settings are with it right now. Um, I've got the standard settings from Berlin or Emil in the UK and then we'll, we'll compare to make sure it's standard or, or not. 
And then as I go through, I'll be checking all the parts, of course. I need to check to see if there's any warping on this flange as well. All the parts. So that will be the next job. Before I start taking everything apart, I usually like to register where the throttle stop position was and the air screw. And so what I do is here, for example, if I look at that at, let's say this is 12 o'clock. So 12 o'clock is directly up. Um, I'm at about five past 12 and I'll turn this in in half turn increments so until it stops so a half one one and a half about two two until it stops and then I'll wind it all the way out and now I know that it was two turns out Eee, look at that that's pretty dirty And the same with the air screw. We're at about nine or quarter two horizontal position. And we'll do half one, one and a half, oh, exactly one and a half. It's amazing this bike started. <laughs> and the washer. Oh, it pushed out. The jet block pushed out. That's great. Here's the carburetor, totally disassembled. On the bench, and I was able to remove the main jet block without any problems. I just tapped it out with a drift. It didn't damage anything. So I've registered all the settings and all the jet sizes. Everything's standard except for the main jet. It's got a slightly larger jet at 300 than the standard 290, but we'll just leave that. And then just observed it's very dirty inside and out. And so I'm glad that I'm taking this apart. It will look like jewellery when it comes out of the ultrasonic cleaner. I'll also order a new washer kit for it and replace all those fibre washers. And then also I think I'll order a plastic float and then the, the needle, uh, the float needle as well. I'll order a new one of those, probably this gauze as well. And then one thing I did notice was this... This tube that normally the spring runs through for the choke mechanism, I don't think it had one and I'm not sure if it should, but I'll double check that. I might even have a spare one. So next job will be to put all of these parts into the ultrasonic cleaner and then see how they come out.
This is a very enjoyable part of the project and please don't tell anyone but I am using Harley Davidson Chrome Clean and Shine. So Harley makes some of the best products for polishing chrome as you could expect and uh, it's very gentle, it's more like a cream is this, uh, this chrome cleaner and shine and so I don't sense any abrasion at all, any abrasiveness in this solution. I'm just going over it very gently. Um, I've done several passes on the other side that I'll show you in a few minutes. But I'm just sticking to the chrome and maybe just ever so lightly touching the paintwork. And it's a very pleasurable job seeing this chrome come up. This chrome from 1962, amazing. And then what you probably saw is I'm just using my little thumbnail to get rid of some of these rust spots. I'm sure you could just use like a little plastic scraper or something not to damage the chrome but actually your thumbnail works perfectly. Good job I'm not spoiling my manicure when I do this. It just scratches right off. And here it is, finished on the bench. It looks like it's going even faster, doesn't it, with these flames cleaned up and polished. And so I'm really, really happy with how this has come out. The chrome is excellent and there's no dents or anything, just a few little pit marks, but nothing that you can see until you get really close up. I've polished the paintwork a little bit. I was a little nervous about doing it actually, so I've sort of focused down the sides as you can probably or possibly tell. So this is nice and shiny. I've tried not to polish too much on the pinstriping um, because I suspect it's a little bit more delicate. Done a little bit in here and then around the top. Then this is the other side. Let me just show you the front first of all. Looks great. And then this is the other side. This had more rust spots here but they've all gone. I just scratched them away with my little thumbnail. So very very happy with the results and now moving further forward on the bike starting to look at the fork assembly and the handlebars next. Well that's it for this week's episode guys. I hope you enjoyed it and by the way thank you very much indeed for all your kind comments when I took the Vincent out for a ride last week. I really appreciate it and especially the thoughts that you had about content for the channel. I've definitely made a note of all of those and I'm going to try and get back to the comments as well individually. It's just taking me a bit of time but uh, thanks anyway. I do appreciate it. So yeah this is it for now and um, still lots to do. I've still got to move further forward on the bike there's some work that is required on the forks and the handlebars and the front wheel and a new tire and the list goes on you know what it's like so I'll see you again next week see ya